Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Slow City Together <laughs> podcast. Ba, 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 ba. It is Wednesday, May 8th. You got Luke, you got Brent, and you got Jordan. Second time in a row. Second time in a row. It's back. And I'm glad you're here. Forcing my way back onto the podcast. No more of this affirming who you are and your presence Thank here. Thank you. Though, Tear me down. That's, yeah. Today can be about tearing me down. <laughs> Brent went searching for a new new host. Yeah, speaking for the of being, <laughs> speaking of being torn down, I did not. Sh- it was a hosting service, not a host. There was a misunderstanding. Yeah. Are we you thought- technically the host? I. I what are the like- roles? I think I'm the producer. Mm-hmm. You're the producer. Yeah, I produce Who's the, the host? podcast. Brent, I get. I I kind of feel like I'm the host too. I, think I don't you're know. The host. Yeah. Thank you. I'll be the host. But I think we're it's a co-host. It's, it's not a slow city together podcast based on with Luke person. Lyons and guests. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good to be here with you guys today. Good to be seen here. Yeah, to, to, I do. I think the story is worth sharing, though. Where you you texted Jordan and I last oh. week, so we we launched. Uh, you launched rather. <laughs> we you specifically. No, we launched a podcast. <laughs> the Instagram. Instagram. We now have the 114th episode. <laughs> yeah, we went public. <laughs> Finally, we're putting it out there. We're ready. The people want more. <laughs> had enough dry runs. The people want more. And you made a wonderful clip from last week's podcast. But you texted that to me and Jordan. And we're going to play it here. No, I'm not going to play it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you texted Jordan and I and said, hey, I, I have this vision for the podcast going forward and all these ideas. And part of that, you said, I'm going to find a new host. <laughs> Which and then Jordan responded with, "Great clip. Who's gonna host it?" Yeah, and I didn't you said, know what I was <laughs> "You said not sure. Gonna search for someone yeah. or, ser- or gonna, gonna, gonna do a search. Gonna do a search. Gonna, gonna do a search, search around. I'm not like putting out. <laughs> I was saying like you know yeah. subsplash because right now this podcast is attached to the church podcast, which is good. Yeah, but you can't necessarily go to Apple, Spotify, yeah. and find just this. Be- and so we could. I don't think we can use subsplash to host if we wanted to separate it. Yeah, even though it's still p- always going to be part of Slow City. iHeart Radio. iHeart Radio. Or what are yeah. some other ones? Yeah, I don't know. I was, uh, There's a lot of Anchor. Them. Anchor. Anchor.fm mm-hmm. is good. Uh, Steve Carter has a podcast. He was like telling me a bunch of them. He sent me a, a list. And so, no, I want you guys on the podcast. <laughs> you ring the fun. And um, and the pictures. I'm sorry if you I hurt on. your feelings. It was, was the it was thought, was, did you feel like, oh. I felt excited to see who the new host was. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought maybe it was going to be a big name. Yeah. I mean, to top us, it had to be. So yeah. I, was, I was just excited to... Okay. Jordan said his thought process was like, man, he just really doesn't want us to be on there anymore. Okay. Just any anyone but you guys. We're teasing yeah, you. Yeah, it's, it's We're a joke. teasing it you. A joke. But it was funny. It made me laugh. I've, I've never told Luke's girlfriend, Abby, this, but I'll say it on the podcast. Okay. Does she listen? Yeah. My favorite thing about Abby is she doesn't understand how Luke and I joke. She does understand how Luke and I joke with each other, but it makes her uncomfortable. Abby Allen? Abby Allen. Mm-hmm. So sometimes when I am joking intensely with Luke, she will dispel her own anxiety by saying, he's kidding, he's kidding, he's kidding. He's try to, to try and make you feel better. But, yeah. it, but it's really yeah. to soothe herself because she's yes. uncomfortable in the tension yeah. and she doesn't know if Luke yeah. knows that I'm joking, but Luke clearly knows that, I'm joking. That's a sign of love she's it is. it's very you. endearing it's very, very endearing what's what's and that's why it's my favorite thing about her what's first corinthians 13 love is patient love is it does not it does not envy it does not boast it, <gasps> it keeps no record of wrong keeps no record of wrong it doesn't it protect it always protects. protects see does mm-hmm. it say that but that does one? it over protect is the question no, mm. no it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> there you go that's all that's all we got today <laughs> that was the question and we've answered it uh, and we're moving on all right now yeah. So, um, yeah, how's the week been? Give me an update. What have you guys been thinking about chewing on? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of disoriented right now. It's Wednesday? It yeah. is. Wow. Yeah. Crazy week. Mm-hmm. Why well, has it been crazy? Yeah, let's pr- uh, prove it. Prove it? Yeah. Start a new class. Oh. End of Men's Monday. What's the class? Men's Monday was on, great. Stop. What's the class? <sighs> What's you it ready called? for this? Yeah. Couples therapy and sexuality. Oh. Wow. And it has been the first time that I've encountered content in a course that I'm like, oh, 
well, yeah, how do I handle this? <laughs> huh. You know, just yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> there's been nothing that's been like, okay, okay, I gotta like <sighs> calm my mind or something. I don't yeah. know. It's just, it's just, uh, has it challenged different or in incur- ha- has your faith? How has your faith? Mm. Yeah, can kinda, we, you want to talk about this? Yeah, I think I've it's talked good. about this with a couple of people because Jenna, Jenna's in some of those classes too right now, but she, we've had some interesting conversations because it, yeah. it exposes those classes expose you to all of these, like the D- DSM alone is like, yeah. what. That's a thing? So here, well, now I don't know if I know what you're asking, but I'm going to answer the way I interpreted that you're asking, which is this. Yes, good. The way my faith has interacted with my learning experience. Yes. That's what I'm asking. Okay. Uh, Is that what you wanted to ask? Want to answer? (laughs) That's what I was going to answer. Okay, good. Yeah, which which is I was expecting, so my my university is not a (gasps) faith-based Or yeah, not a faith based <laughs> institution. So I was like, I wonder what this will be like. Scandalous. I wonder what it will be like because you know, every class you have introduction mm-hmm. Sim- a symbus. Like no, a discussion not post? A is that what you mean? <laughs> I think a Simbus Harry- is a marriage couple's uh, uh I think it's a broom that Harry Potter <laughs> got. <laughs> This is for his no. Quidditch team. Sim, no, Simbus, Simbus is 2000. really quickly. It's like this is the Chinook all over again. Yeah. It's the there's a Simbus uh, curriculum that is premarital counseling. That, oh, okay. But, okay, but I'm Syllabus. not thinking so. <laughs> <laughs> You say ah yes, the Simbus. <laughs> Uh, um, Keep going. So introductory, and the way my classes work is I start a new one every month, and so it's a lot of introductions. And so I've every time I'm a little like, uh, honestly, I feel a little exposed. Like, mm-hmm. okay, are people going to respond positively, negatively to me saying, "Hey, I was a pastor for 15 years, and yeah. just recently stepped yeah. out of that to go back to school." Um, like to talk about issues of faith, like is that going to be weird? And it hasn't yet. And okay. in fact, I feel like maybe set you up well. The field has come. I had I had coffee with Rose, mm. and her husband was a therapist and a teacher of therapists, hmm. and she said issues of faith in his heyday were kind of arm's length. Like, don't bring that here. Like that. This is not the place. Yeah. But now. Ironically, because because the view of healing is like so holistic, holistic now, yeah. mm-hmm. it's been reintegrated as like a part mm-hmm. of healing and health. And so like now it's like, okay, it's not necessarily like prescribed, like, okay, make sure your clients believe Brain, in God yeah, or yeah. pray, but it's like, yeah. if that's what's important to them, would we'll be willing to explore that or like to not discount that as a way that they're finding and like the cool thing is it all recognizes like the power of community Hmm. and how beneficial that is for a person and even prayer i'm like cool yeah Yeah, prayer like because everything's like about these centering calming techniques and stuff Mm. like that and so like maybe a little different than how we view prayer but still Mm. pieces of it come in and so Mm. it's been really it's it's not been weird at any point yeah which i've been that's cool like oh cool have you had any weird like? Do you do you talk to your classmates much? I do, and tell about your like. Have you had any, any good or weird interactions there, like about your faith, uh, or has it been? Because I think I think the perception from a lot of Christian or like the narrative that I think some of the Christian circle will start to argue is that the world is out to get us, right? In like right. an antagonistic way. Mm-hmm. Now there is a subtle pool of the world that will like sift yeah. us like wheat, but I think like the antagon, I have not seen antagonism towards faith, people of faith in those circles. I have haven't experienced, experienced it. it. No, yeah. I haven't. Well, good. It's been That's really good. cool. It's a good answer. Yeah. It's been really cool. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been really cool. Yeah. Good. Glad. Do, do you hope, like, as you think ahead to your career, like, mm-hmm. as you're studying, sets you up to be a counselor, a therapist? Hold you on, want you're wanting it? to get a job in this field? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah. means he won't be on the podcast much. Uh, we never said that. Okay, that, good. that could absolutely still happen. Okay. Do you, do you, are you, is your, are you thinking that, like, faith will intersect in your practice of that? Oh, no. Or uh, yeah. do you, is that yes, your ideal? Yes, in the way. Or... Is it just kind of, if that happens, great. If not, 
Yeah, I think I would be particularly gifted and set up to explore those things with people. Yeah. Whereas that's not necessarily going to, that's at least right now my plan isn't that for that to be my main, you know, selling point. Like, mm, yeah. hey, come to me if you yeah. want to talk about your faith and yeah. struggles with that. You but are like, just going to be, a, you're going to be a counselor who has a personal yeah, who is a Christian? Like yeah, more yeah. than a, more than being a Christian counselor, a right. counselor who's a Christian yeah. and who has a lot of experience that would probably help me <laughs> interact with somebody who is yeah. Yeah. having a struggle of faith or whose faith is important to them and wants to deal with other issues. So yeah, that's how I see it being the most helpful yeah. to our community. You know, mm-hmm. like I think if I were to advertise myself as the Christian counselor, yeah. I, I could still serve the community well, but a smaller swath, I would think. Sure. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably fair. You know, it's interesting. It's like, I, I think one of the last sermons you preached in that summer, you yep. preached on vocation. health. It was on vaca- vocation. And I think that's a big, a big part of like coming to f- fully recognize your calling and saying like, I can live in the, in the secular world and hold a really rooted faith. I read something from A.W. Tozer a couple weeks ago that was mm. cool. It was like, he says, let every man abide in the calling wherein he is called and his work will be as sacred as the work of the ministry. It is not what a man does that determines whether his work is sacred or secular. It is why he does it. Mm-hmm. And I think like, if like <clears throat> Christian business people or Christian counselors or, or like, not Christian, uh, counselors who are followers of Jesus, Mm -hmm. businessmen who are followers of Jesus, teachers Mm -hmm. who are followers of Jesus, just live out like they're calling to teach, they're calling to do business, they're calling to whatever, like Mm -hmm. in the way that honors Christ, um, it becomes sacred, even though it's secular. So that's like the blending of like the kingdom of God and how that is ushered in. And I think that's what I think about when you share that little. Thank you. Yeah. Muse, musing. And And it came up at, I don't remember why it came up at Men's Monday. But it was the that the Brother Lawrence book, mm. Practicing the Presence of God. Practice of the Presence oh. of God. Have you read that? Uh-uh. No. You should. It's the best book ever. What? Is it really? What century? Hmm. I want to say 1900s. Really? No, I thought no. it was older. I'll look it up. He's a monk, okay. and his whole his whole thing. <laughs> the, <laughs> he's the a gist, monk. If I had to make it one sentence, is like he's like if I'm washing dishes, I'm washing dishes yeah. for the Lord. If I'm mopping floors, I'm mopping floors. Like every moment is a moment. 17th Jesus. century. Wow. The Practice of the Presence of oh God is a book of collected teachings of Brother Lawrence, uh, a 17th century Carmelite friar. What is a Carmelite, you ask? Girl Scout cookie. <laughs> oh gosh, that is so sacrilegious. <laughs> Carmel, Carmel <laughs> Delight, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. short. Yeah. yeah they changed the name. Shorthand, yeah. <laughs> All right, so... Yeah. I, I was thinking too. You know, uh, there's Tim Keller has a book called Every Good Endeavor. Have, yeah. you, have you guys read that one? No, nope. I've skimmed it. It's like a, a similar, probably to yes. that. It, what A W uh, Tozer? A W Tozer. I, and he he even touches on the point. I think it's. I'm pretty sure it's in this book where he talks about like work in the context of the creation story. Yeah. Like we think of work as a curse, but actually yeah. work was the blessing that was then cursed like as part of the curse of sin but even like drawing he, he's like yeah kind of reclaiming uh, a theological perspective of of work hmm. like drawing, I, I listened specifically to a, he had a for sermon on that was like a condensed version of that yeah that I, listened I think to. that's it that is a really i think pressing that conversation is really needed i was yeah. talking we had a wednesday morning bible study this morning and kind of lingered after I was just talking to somebody who was like saying, I'm not super fulfilled Mm. in my work. And I think that's a big wrestle of like, how do I work Mm -hmm. in a job that like isn't quote unquote making a difference and yet yet see it as, you know, I'm going to, I'm worshiping, I don't know, see it as a a call, yeah, finding meaning and purpose and a calling in it. That's super important. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? How do we do that? Read the book. Uh, I mean, I, th- I think the book is helpful because it also, it, you know, boop, it's, book. St- yeah, I'll put up a picture. It starts with like, Brother Lawrence, boop. It Very starts with the hope of like that perspective on work. But then as you read it, it kind of does go into like the gloom of like, well, that like that doesn't always like carry you through. Like yeah. that doesn't always make, oh, yeah. even just that thought doesn't always make your work fulfilling. So, so then what? To be honest, so it's been a while quit. since I've read. You quit and you buy a van and you drive to Alaska. Yep. 
That was his application. <laughs> yeah. That's that. That's the movie into <clears throat> into the wild. Not into the wild. Yeah. Is that what it is? You're all about that McCandless. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's your guy. What? Well, that all. and as I said yesterday, the word chalice. Those are two <laughs> things. I, I should go get my chalice. You have. I was gonna say it's just because there's you a have story a about that chalice. That's why. And so every once in a while, you'll say, "I could get my chalice." I could. <laughs> and so I, I just, say I, that you said it on a couple of cases. Like we could use my chalice. We could use my chalice. You know why <laughs> that chalice? Can I tell the Which chalice? Which is a phrase yeah. that nobody else has ever said to me. So we were young, dumb, and in ministry, and broke. Young, dumb, and broke, and in ministry. Uh, Matt Allman and I, and we would wake up on Monday mornings. We would listen to Mark Moore's Acts class online, and this was in like 2009. Okay, and um, maybe no, 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 no. This is like 2007, eight. So Keegan was just born. We'd listen to Mark New Moore's, Albany? yeah, Mark Moore's Acts class. Then we would watch Francis Chan's Cornerstone See Me sermons. And then on Thursdays after the work week, we would go to, it was called, what was it called? I forget what organization. It was a clean water organization in Louisville. And we would go and sit with a guy named Mark Hogg, H-O-G-G. He runs like, he does clean water drilling all over the world. I I think it's Water Step now. Hmm. Um, But they would do these huge clean water things. Anyways, we would sit with him. He was like this like, old sage type of guy like he always was smoking a cigar and he was like pretty like rough and tumble he Hmm. cursed but he loved jesus and he Mm -hmm. i don't know as young like pastors we were enamored by this guy Mm -hmm. and one of his hobbies was he made chalices glass chalices like he made that plate and that chalice that i have Uh uh-huh like for communion, he made those and he signed the bottom of them. Oh. And so we would meet with him every week and he kind of saw us as like his, I don't know if he saw us. I don't assistance. know. He's like, yeah. like, these guys have nothing better to do with their time. Uh, we were like, we were, because I think we were going to Haiti and we had ideas yeah. a lot about yeah, yeah, yeah. that. But then he made these things for us and it's like, I don't know. I haven't talked to him in probably 15 years, but like, uh, it's it means something. Yeah. That's cool. What is it made out of? Mm, it's like a clay. It's clay. It's clay. Okay. Oh, is it? Yeah, because I think it like I can't remember <laughs> the visual of ghost. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> Patrick Swayze as a ghost it. making. Yeah. He shouldn't. <sighs> <laughs> it's not biblical. <laughs> it's not biblical. <laughs> not biblical or edifying to the body. Oh. Whoopi yeah. Goldberg's in it though. She is. One of my that ver- that, favorite actresses. That picture of, of hell in that movie is terrifying. When all the people it. are like getting sucked into, uh, like they're like all the spirits are. I think that's in that movie where they're like being. That's Ghostbusters. Well, it's a boat. It's both. Pol- it's Poltergeist. Both. It's, haven't seen it. You haven't seen Poltergeist? No. Oh. Have you? Clips. Okay. I forgot that Luke is a horror film entrepreneur. Uh, entrepreneur. entrepreneur. <laughs> I make them in my spare time. I'm like Chalice. Mark Hall. What's the word? What's the word? Uh, I'm aficionado. For. No, it starts with E. Uh, enthusiast. Enthusiast. <laughs> no, it's a... I know, yeah. There's this is what word. happens on Wednesdays. I get up early and I can't <laughs> think of words. Although it also happens on Sunday. Do you know how many times I replace words with words that are close does that mean I have I'm having a stroke? No. Blair Blair is very worried about her doing the same thing. Stroking out, but she's like, all of my friends are doing it too. Yeah. Okay. Good. So it's like a f- near forty <laughs> thing. You just all, all my friends, all my are, friends doing are doing it. Doing it. Friends, so I feel more normal about it. It's probably like a COVID fallout symptom. I'm considerably younger, so I'm not there yet. Yeah. You are. Mm-hmm. You're like thirty five. Thirty six. Mm. Yeah. How old are you? Twenty seven. Such a pup. Such a pup. Such a pup. Wow. Yep. Yep. Well, I'm coming up on uh, my 41st birthday. Oh, you're close. Less than a month. And someone told me yesterday, I think it was you, that my eyes are going bad because I turned 40. Dr. Bradley Kovac, um, yeah, said that when you turn 40, your eyesight starts yeah. to go. That's or around then. That's, well, that's the consistent. I told him I needed bifocals, and he was very against it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust him anymore. <laughs> what? This is my public rant against... <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, I'm just kidding. He was like, no, man, you're too young. Too young for bifocals? I'm like, dude, I'm doing the thing where it's like... This is an eye doctor? I'm like, 
holding things like this like away from me. Maybe though, if you give your eyes a bifocal, it atrophies them for future. I think you're, right. I think that is That's something he said. Yeah. Hmm. But still, how does that Trust principle him? apply? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. How does that principle apply to other areas of life? Hold the hold your <laughs> beliefs close. <laughs> Because if you put if you keep them far away, I don't know. No, I'm saying like what? What is the the, <laughs> the principle of if you do something too soon, you will atrophy yourself going forward? Mm. Does that make sense? Because if you put on bifocals, he's like your eyes are going to okay. get tired yeah. and it's, your eyesight's going to go all bad. If What's that? Do. What? How is that principle played out in other areas of life? My mind goes to you know people talk about like. Uh, dopamine a lot, oh. you know. And so my mind. Goes you to talk that. about that a lot. <laughs> I do on a podcast. <laughs> I do, yes. But with Allie you... Watts, I remember it. Oh, wow. jeez. So you're a listener. Uh, you're a fan of, course of, you're a fan of the podcast. Uh, no, but the idea of if if yeah, you you never you, get it back. Uh, you get it back. That's just, sleep. We talked about that as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get sleep back, which I think I disagree with now. Do you do? Go you with up? the dopamine. Dopamine. Okay, Sorry, dopamine. this is Luke's time. No, that's okay. No, you uh, always, I, we always cut you off. It, it's all right. Okay. I'm used to it. So if you, no, with I won't stand for that. With, <laughs> that self. We're just gonna keep cutting him off because he's <laughs> exactly. Because he's asking for it. <laughs> I can't let him push us around like that. I, to be honest, I don't even know where I was going with the dopamine, dopamine. thing. But I, I know if 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 you're like constantly in a state of receiving these like spikes in dopamine, it, it decreases. Atrophies. Yeah, it atrophies. Dol- it decreases your base level of dopamine, and mm, therefore okay. your like interaction with things that actually should and do like you know going f- like exercising should have an increase of <laughs> dopamine. I must have too much mm. dopamine then. <laughs> Yeah, that's why exercising does nothing <laughs> positive for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, that was a good talk. Thank you. You had something you wanted to talk about. Do you want to go there? Or is it? I mean, we're already, we're already at twenty two minutes, so I feel well. Like a I tough think thing we should to, just we should could we either go for go the spirit follow up or we could go Hebrews if you're let's saved. Go, let's go through the spirit okay. follow up. We'll save we'll save the other. Well, Jordan didn't want to talk episode. about it, so you <clears throat> you bowed the knee to Jordan. What? Oh. He didn't want to talk about the Hebrews thing. Oh. It's a big conversation. That's true. Yeah, I think, yeah, let's come back to that. Okay, tomorrow. Quarter pound of bacon. Wow. Second episode of the podcast. Hey, I finished my sermon today. Yeah, I feel I good. I got, awesome. I got 20 minutes tomorrow. I can talk <laughs> randomly. Great. I think I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. All right, go. So Holy Spirit follow-up or uh, Fruit oh, of the Spirit. Fruit That's what you said? Holy Fruit. Holy Fruit of the Spirit. Oh. Yeah, Fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Kicked off new sermon series <clears throat> this yep. week. Fruit of the Spirit. Love and joy. Taking it two at a time until self control. <laughs> because nine is not <clears throat> perfectly divided by two. That's no. right. And there are nine fruits. Although of the we spirit. could add self control to another one and do it. Are you talking about self? Oh, hold on. Oh. Breaking news. <laughs> Luke Lyons will be preaching Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. May 26th. Yeah. Yep. Uh, faithfulness and gentleness mm. is, is that week of the I, series. I, you know, and that's what I thought. If there's one fruit of the spirit or two to describe two. Luke Lyons, it's, it'd be gentle oh. and faith. You were about to touch me and then you stopped. <laughs> <laughs> that was maybe... <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was, it was oh, more oh, uncomfortable than if you'd actually you. done it. Just the, the subtle move, the suggestion. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Don't do it. Don't He's do just it. a gentle guy. <laughs> Gentle and faithful. Oh. I'm excited for that. Are you nervous? Yeah, yeah, I am. Good, I've not good. ever good. given you a message be. to um, a non-student-based uh, congregation. Yeah. It's um, actually, yeah. It's actually what? It's more intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I would think. I would think that to be no. the case. I think it's less intimidating. Really? I think adults are more prone to get on your wavelength to give and grace get and they give you and they give grace and give yeah. great some, some kids are like <laughs> this guy I don't want to be here I don't want to listen That's to what fair. this guy yeah, has to say a little more like standoffish yes. towards someone presenting it's, you, you got to win them over more I yeah. feel like whereas adults are like okay well kind of on your I team see, I think that bit. but they also but adults listen closer yeah, yeah. they right. listen to words true and so uh, you know like I had somebody come up to me on Sunday back to the fruit of the spirit mm-hmm who talked about the correlation between 
like receiving the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to grow things in you, like the correlation between what what is our responsibility or work mm. and what is the Holy Spirit? Do yeah. I just pray and wait and pray mm. and yeah. wait and then if nothing happens, do I just keep going? Well, yeah. I'm trying. I tried. I yeah. tried, and so and like, what's the relationship between? And I thought I talked to that. I thought I talked to that with the football thing with like yeah. catching yeah, and receiving. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the work of like constantly putting yourself in a posture of receiving the Holy Spirit and mm-hmm. walking in step with the Spirit. But we were in a small group conversation last night where it was like, well, what, is it actually, what does it actually mean to walk in step with the Spirit? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's like the, the practicality of that message. Because you can say like, I want to be more loving. I want to be more, experience more joy. Yeah. But like, but how? How do you how do you receive the Holy Spirit and know that that's know that that's growing in you? Yeah, because yeah. that's the measurables we want in American society. We want to know like mm-hmm. I put in the work and now here's the product. And sometimes you can't do that always. You can't do that always, but that's frustrating and that's hard, for yes, people, yeah. Yeah. and it, it can often often depress people. Yep, or frustrate people. Yeah. Yep, or turn so, them 180 degrees around because they're like, well. Yeah, like it doesn't work. It isn't working. Didn't work as yeah. fast as I wanted yeah. it to work, so now I'm going to go yeah. go to, you know, whatever. Yeah. So what are some of those things that, like, you guys talked about? Or, like, how did you guys as a group navigate that question? I think where it went... Keeping in step with the Spirit. Not being super cliche in it, it went to a, a little bit of, like, where Paul says, so pray without ceasing. Mm. And not like, okay, I'm going to pray in the morning and do my devotional for 15 minutes and read the scripture. And like, that's important. But like having an awareness in all things that the spirit is working. And so like inviting the Holy Spirit into an interaction with somebody, taking Mm -hmm. a moment, even a split second in your mind or in your spirit to say like, give me the, I don't know. Like, and so we, we talked about working that muscle of constant awareness similar to how we are constantly aware of and we didn't talk about this but this just popped in my head we are constantly aware of what our phone is doing and where our phone is at all times mm. even subconsciously Attention. you know i mean i know like mine's sitting right there and mm-hmm. you know and, and it's constantly like attached to us and it's yeah. informing us and it's mm-hmm. reminding us and it's like so we have sometimes replaced the spirit with the phone, you know? And it's like, so how do I get to a place where I disconnect from some of the things that I constantly know where they are and what they're saying to me and what they're demanding of me and replace that hmm. with a moment of prayer, a moment of breath, a moment of like saying like, Lord, what do you, like, what do you, what do you have for me in this? Because mm-hmm. we're so reliant now on like, I'm going to go and I'm going to Google this and I'm going to go and pick this up and I'm going to look, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just talked about, that's a hard, it's hard. It's really hard where we're at. And what I, what we also talked about is like how, how envious we are of some other cultures that are less metrics, less driven, I would say, Mm. in some ways, less driven by metrics and production Mm -hmm. and more driven by relationships and time. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I think we are in American society, we are uh, we're up against just like a mountain of obstacles to practicing the presence of God. I mean, go read Bro- Brother Lawrence's book, and you're going to just be like, "How do I even yeah. How do I get start that? to do <laughs> that?" Because apply? we've just cluttered our <laughs> lives with dopamine. It all comes back to dopamine. Yeah. It always does. Dopamine and sleep. Yeah, but you, it's all gone. You use it all up. <laughs> so wow, yeah, that's deep. That is. I trying, I was, in my head, I lost focus because I was trying to figure out the rest of how the phone metaphor plays out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> like constant. I was, trying, I was trying to take it a step further, hmm. paint an even bigger picture. I'm like, there's got to be even more there of like, yeah. yeah, not only receiving, but then reacting or like taking a step, like engaging. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's where my mind went was like, even if even if information or some or or I can't think of the right word is coming at us mm-hmm. like just to know it's coming and mm-hmm. sitting there doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, well, it's it. Like, it can be frustrating, you yeah. know, to know like what did they say? It's all piling up yeah. or like what's happening. But I, I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. I don't that was know. week one of Men's Mondays with those John Ortberg videos. He said information alone isn't transformative, mm-hmm. you know, which I think is like an important part of the Christian faith as well. Like 
there are like we should read scripture we should pray we should like mm-hmm. corporate worship and have a time where we're like receiving <clears throat> a word of mm-hmm. who god is but i think that's what i and another thing i've appreciated about those videos is how he says like what is a small step yeah. like a, a super small step mm-hmm. of like applying the information that you are intaking. And I think like reading scripture, a relationship with Jesus is more than just receiving information. Right. But I do think there is this sense of like, all right, I've received something about who God is, about uh, the way of Jesus, and what is one small thing yeah. that I can do. And I think, I, yeah, to, to kind of go back to the metrics thing, like we neglect the small things, mm-hmm. you know, um, of even just like taking a step towards taking a bigger step, you know, of, mm-hmm. of initiating something bigger. So I've found, I really, he used, came, brought that up a lot um, in mm-hmm. those videos and I found that really helpful because it is when you're thinking about forming habits and practicing the presence of God, it, it is like a very daunting thing and, and can be even overwhelming to think about how to yeah. apply that as you guys have said, so, yeah. One like, and how quickly we just, we chuck it and we go to the next thing and we yeah. say like, oh, that didn't work, I'm gonna go to, I don't know, shopping. Yeah. I'm gonna go to buying. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go to comparing myself. I'm gonna go to, you know, because I that gives me a, a an immediate return that I can see. Yeah, sure. And even though it fades, you know, um, that's like the American. Uh, yeah, just the American like trap. Yeah, I'm just chasing it all, and so, and that's hard, man. It's hard. It, that that's like a spiritual thing that I think many of us are facing in San Luis Obispo and around the country that we don't realize that we're facing. It's like a spiritual war that we don't know that we're in. It's like, it's that distraction, dopamine, all that stuff blended into one, so. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And then like, you know, you talk about the first week of Fruit of the Spirit was love and joy. It's like, and then when you see somebody, and I keep thinking about that, when the boys came home and told me that the guy cursing at the, did I, I think I talked about it on the podcast. Maybe I didn't. No, not on the podcast. Sure. Um, but um, no, no, I w- it hadn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, crazy if you would. <laughs> yeah. But I think like, um, it was ironic that it was like the week that we're talking about the welcome home village and houselessness and then yeah. a man is cur- cursing out somebody for sitting in an area and I'm like, and they're like, where does that, how does that happen? And I'm like, well, I think Jesus said, from the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, and the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And so we've just like consuming self, consuming my comfort, consuming my privilege, consuming what's deserved to me, that you look at other people as just in the way. And Mm -hmm. so, and the the opposite is consuming yourself with the spirit, what the spirit says and the Imago Dei and the, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, then that pours out and you say, oh, that guy deserves a sense of humanity, Mm -hmm. you know? Josh Knightbecker said he drove somebody to Napomo this week. I'm like, where does that come from? Mm-hmm. It doesn't come from just, it comes from a heart that says, I don't know. So, yeah. Excited for this week. We're going to talk about peace and patience, which I need both of <laughs> desperately. And um, so we'll try and Except create a that. formula where everybody can find peace and patience on Measurab- Sunday. Measurably. Come to yeah. church on Sunday. You're going to walk out with peace and patience. 25% more of each. <laughs> We measured. I need more. Measured. I need, more I than need that? 30. You need 30. Oh. Mm. <clears throat> we could do 30 of 120 of the other. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And we're going to talk just minimally. I think they're correlated. I think peace and patience kind of go together. Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to explore that. Well, with you. I don't know if it will be. Well. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be. Oh, anything. hold on there, Bucky. I'm going to back up a little bit. It's also Mother's <laughs> Day. Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we've got some gifts for moms. We right? do. Hannah's been working really hard on yeah. those, so it's good. So if you're a mom or you know a mom, invite them to church. Yeah. They'll get a gift. Yeah. It'll be great. Awesome. Well, anything else? We're, we're at our wrapping up point, so. I've no. spoken my piece. Okay, good. Well, this and has been great. <laughs> We went really deep and then came out of it real quick, and that's yeah. why I'm like, it feels oh, shell shot. It's like, did we just end right here? So I just got tired. Yeah. So we're gonna end. Thanks for joining All us right. today. Good talking with you guys. We'll talk with you soon. Peace. Bye.